Hi everyone, welcome to GitHub series. My name is Prasad and today we are going to see what is Git and what is GitHub. Have you ever been in a situation where you have done your code and forgot to save? What if suddenly the code is lost? What if you lost your laptop? What if somewhere the laptop have some problems or suddenly you lost the code? Do you think company will accept it? No? Then how do we save the code? Imagine four people are working on a system and four people are working on one project and each one has to share their particular code to the another persons. How do you do that? Let's see it practically. For example, I go here, I open here Google Docs. If I do some Google Docs, in Google Docs, have you ever tried to type something? Let me see it here. Imagine I try to do something in Google Doc. If I type this is a series on GitHub. Now my series, whatever I typed in Google Doc, it will be saved as version 1. Imagine tomorrow I opened this particular Google Doc. Again, from there, wherever I stopped, there I will continue. What if suddenly I want to check what I have typed only yesterday? I don't want to go with whatever I typed today. So how do I go back? That means everything you have done need to be stored as versions. How do you do that? And the answers to all questions is done by Git and GitHub. Let's see our series, what is Git and GitHub. Let's start, sir. What we will be learning today? Today we will see what is version control system, which is Git. And how do you do basic CLI commands and introduction to the Git, setting up the Git in VS Code and introduction to GitHub. And finally, we will end with an interesting quiz questions which will testify your knowledge throughout the PPT. Let's go here. First, what is a version control system? Git is a version control system, but how it will work? Imagine you are a designer, you are trying to do one video, you are trying to do some code, you are a developer, or you are trying to do some kind of presentation. Initially, you did one poster, you are a designer and you did one poster, fine. But the manager didn't like it and they asked for another one. Okay, you did an another one, final presentation. But still they didn't like it, so you did an another one, which is final, final presentation. And this keeps on going on. What if suddenly the manager says, let's bring back the first one which you did. How can you do that? Because you just all the time altered it. Or you might have stored each one separately, like so four file storage will be wasted. And this problem can be solved with Git, where each file, every time when we update, we will store it as one version, so that next time when we want it, we can go back to that version. Seems cool, right? Let's see how it will work. Version control systems manages the entire process of version. Whatever the changes you have done, it will keep a track. For example, see here. I'm doing some changes. I will create one file. You can see it here. I'm just doing one file, HTML, and I'm just writing something. I can write whatever I want. I can write whatever I want. But does anyone observe it? Does anyone tracking my code? No, no one will track it. But if in this particular one, imagine the Git is there. I will show you what is Git one more time but still imagine the git is there and now if git is there in your system in that particular file now if i try to do i will tell you the commands now see here if i'm dying trying it something i am typing something see when i type it something that means a is changed to m modified how do they know that I modified the code? How do they know that I read something more? That means someone is tracking my file. Someone is tracking in this particular file, any changes happen. See? Now go here, go back. 
Is there any changes? No. Now, see, again A came. What is A? What is M? We will see it in future. But whatever you are typing it, someone is tracking. And the one which tracks your code is called version control system. Basically, it controls your version. Today, I did some code. It's version 1. Tomorrow, I do in another one, version 2. Then again, another one, version 3. Like this, each and every versions will be stored. Same like my code. See here. It will store the versions. Git will also, what is the use of storing versions? I can go back to any version I like. Imagine suddenly the manager says, bring you the first one. I can go back because every version is saved. What is the difference between first version and current version? I can compare them and I can tell who, who did this first version, you, at what time, at what date, and at what moment. Again, who did this third version, second version, what time, why did you make it? Everything is stored with something version control system. One of the major version control system in the industry is Git. Let's start here, Git. But before we learn Git, sir, you should learn something called command line interface, which is also called CMD, command prompt. You go to the command prompt and there are some kind of command line interfaces. What is the use of command prompt? Command prompt will give you some commands. You give some commands to a command prompt. It will automatically do some actions. Instead of using your mouse, you will give commands. Like for example, in kind of Linux and all, you give it some command with ls. It In Linux and all, it will list a particular items. Here, when I do cls, it will clear the screen. And there is one command which I want you to know, which is cd. cd means change directory. Change directory means change the folder. If you want to go to any folder, you need to write change directory, folder name. If you want to come outside the directory, you need to write cd dot dot, which will come out of the directories. The reason we are discussing command line interface is because in Git, everything is achieved by commands. And how do you do that commands? We will see it here. Let's start the Git again. First, you have to install the Git. How do you install the Git, sir? Go to internet, type it here, git download for Windows, where you will go to the Git website. Go there. Select your operating system. Mine is Windows. Select it with setup 64 bit. I'm selecting it, standalone installer, which will install your standalone Git. All you have to do is select that particular Git and just install it. You can follow the procedure while I'm doing it. Install. And all it will do is remove your older version of Git and it will install the newer version. By the time it installs into our system, if you forgot to subscribe, subscribe to our channel, like, share and comment also. Let's see here how much time it will take it to install. It's installing fast. fast. Let's do. So once it is installed, I want to check whether it is installed correctly or not. So just to check it whether it is installed correctly or not, you have to go to command prompt and type it here, git. You have to type it here, git dash v. If git is installed in your system, it will give you the commands, git version. Which version is installed in my system? 2.50.1. And if Git is installed in your system, it will give you Git 2.50.1, which is my version. You, it might install in your system in a different version. By the time you see uh, this particular video, whatever the latest version it will be doing. Let's see here the Git setup. How do we use Git? The first thing, we will check the versions by using Git-V or Git-Version. Then you need to give here git some kind of names. Like you have to first tell the git who you are. For example, git dash config space dash dash 
git space config space dash dash global user dot name and you have to give your username something like Sherlock Holmes Holmes at gmail.com I'm just kidding I don't give that I'm just saying it like you should give it like your actual email ID because see tomorrow you did some code and you saved it who saved it you and you know who you are how do the git will know who you are so you should give your mail ID so that it will know someone Sherlock Holmes saved your code same way git space config space dash dash global user dot email you can give email id here and you can give username in previous one all you have to give is username and email so that it will done some setup that's it now you are ready to use the git go to your visual studio code write some code whatever the code you like and then go to the terminal new terminal and there in the new terminal see it here which folder you are in sample I am also in the sample folder now start the git first command in git git init that means you are initiating the git in the specific folder that means you are starting the git till now there is no git in your folder now you want to start some git okay I started the git can you read it here it initiated an empty git repository that means till now there is nothing in the git and now you try to create one empty repository it's like an empty box and you are gonna store whatever you write it in that box one by one by one by one okay this is called working area whatever the now what you will do sir I will write whatever I want I will do whatever the code I want let's code more and once I was fixed with my code like this is version 1 I think my manager will like this my code obviously not but I think he will like it so I will just make this code a particular save how do you do that all you have to do is git space add I'm adding this file to staging area the staging area is where you will save each and every version of yours before committing the actual code now I want to add it what's the file name index.html what if so more than one file is there what if so many files are there then I need to write it here dot it will add all files if you write it only file name it will add only that particular file if you add it dot it will add all the files to staging area now it's added you can see that once it is added it will start tracking your things see now whenever I do some changes it is observing it so it's modified that means earlier you have some code in that it's written as let's code more but now the code is changed let's code more it's like the code you changed into something you modified both two versions I'm having it one version with let's code more and another version with let's code more and now how do you save this version saving a particular version is considered as git commit git commit dash m and you need to give one message why because today I will write my code and I will save it but after 10 days the manager asks why did you save that code what, what kind of changes you done in that code obviously we forgot now so to make every time whatever the commitments we are doing it whatever the code commits we do we should write a proper commit message in PRs they help a lot and whatever the commit message you write based on that people will understand oh these were the changes happened for so and so purposes by so and so person so I'm just giving it like a basic git demo and that's it your file is changed and it's added but sir can you see here is it added newer version how many files were added only one if you observe it here two versions I'm having it but the first version is added because 
every time you need to write add to save the second version also. So that's what I'm doing it. Now another file is also saved. Everything code is saved. Now anything happen? My code is saved. But did my code save everywhere? No, it's saved in my system. How do you access? If you want my code, how do you access? If I want to share my code with an another person, collaborate with an another guy, how do I save it? How do I share that particular one? That's where GitHub comes. GitHub is a platform where you will deploy, share, collaborate your code with another persons. And Git is a local version control system which is used for tracking your versions. And we will see in the future series how to do it like GitHub. And we will see it like how to do branching. We will do it like how to do pull requests, push requests, and including the open sources. We'll continue with the series the GitHub ones. Thank you all.